The United States is now an occupied country, but it will soon be an occupied country no longer. Not going to be happening. Not going to be happening. November 5th, 2024, nine days from now, will be Liberation Day in America. It's going to be Liberation Day. On day one, I will launch the largest deportation program in American history to get the criminals out. I will rescue every city and town that has been invaded and conquered, and we will put these vicious and bloodthirsty criminals in jail. We're going to kick them the hell out of our country as fast as possible. and to expedite removals of Trende, Aragua, and other savage gangs like MS-13, which is equally vicious. I will invoke the Alien Enemies Act of 1798. Think of that. That's how far back. That's when they had law and order. They had some tough ones. Think of it, the Alien Enemies Act of 1798. You hear that, Mr. Speaker? Get ready. <laughs> to target and dismantle every migrant criminal network operating on American soil. And there are lots of them. Yo, what's happening, guys? It's your boy Uncle P with another episode. Well, guys, this is a very interesting one. You know, with what's happening with South Africa, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Malawi, and all these countries that South Africa is wanting out of their country, South Africa has been labeled a lot of things, from xenophobes to you name it. There's a lot of insults going out from different nations towards South Africa. You know, I've shot a lot of videos and I've shown why South Africa is not a xenophobic country and I've tried to explain the reasoning behind all this desire to want people to be deported. Um, I've attempted to explain the effect that foreigners have in a country, especially illegal foreigners. And it seems like, you know, the Nigerians specifically, they keep coming at me and insulting me and telling me I'm giving false news and so on, so so. You know, I want to see what they're going to say to the Americans now that the Americans are about to deport foreigners. Illegal foreigners and possibly even those ones that use the system to fraudulently get into the country. Let's hear it from the host's mouth themselves. As president, I will carry out the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. The largest deportation force in history. This is not just a talking point, and it's not rhetorical from the former president. It is central to his second term immigration plans. And it's a plan that Republicans have gotten completely behind, including his new vice presidential pick. We have to deport people. We have to deport people who broke our laws, who came in here. And from a policy perspective, this is really important, how they actually implement this, the scale of it, what it would mean not just for people being taken out of the country, but also the economy inside the country. It's critical, and there are a ton of unanswered questions. But one thing that is clear here at the Republican National Convention is there are no questions about whether or not this should be the policy. Republicans, once pursuing comprehensive immigration reform, are now hardline to a person. And at the center of that is a deportation force. You see what people don't understand with illegal aliens, illegal foreigners, or just foreigners in general influxing the country, is that it takes an impact on the economy. It takes a massive impact on the economy. The economy is created and designed to cater for a certain amount of people, which is their citizens. And then they cater for a specific amount of individuals who have scarce skills, or yet skills that the country may not necessarily have in adequate number and they have that spacing for them. But the unfortunate reality is people don't always come into the country and do these cost jobs. I want to play a video that shows the impact and people's reasoning. So this is a reporter asking a senator this question, and this is his response, and everybody gets shocked why he says this. And I'm going to explain why his reasoning actually makes sense. So this is one of the reasonings that a lot of people have, especially foreigners, who feel that this is going to affect them. They always have the type of reasoning that benefits them and doesn't benefit other people. So I want to play a video here to show you, this is a similar issue South Africa has when they're complaining about foreigners. Foreigners literally come up with this very same excuse. 
going to deport. He's going to deport 20 million people. The people who pick your crops, the pe people who process your meat, the people who you know uh, care for your grandma. The people who pick your crops, process your meat, care for your grandmothers. You're telling me that Americans can't do that. You're telling me that Africans can't do that. Zimbabweans have to do it. You see what I'm trying to say? Even in America, you've got people putting out arguments that are so nonsensical to why they are in somebody else's country. People taking care of your grandmothers and picking crops is the reason why America should accept illegal foreigners. People doing your gardens and being helpers and uh, accepting jobs at uh, less than minimum wage is the reason why South Africa should accept foreigners. Doesn't make any sense. Mother? the people who serve all sorts of critical functions in this country, yeah, he's going to deport a lot of people, and that's going to worsen the economy. In fact, there have been, I don't know, like a dozen different independent economic analyses from, again, independent... You see, guys, just because you sound smart doesn't mean you're saying something that makes sense. There's been a dozen analyses. Guys, it's not about analysis. How can you say that getting rid of illegal foreigners and people that you don't want in your country... Who, those, there's going to be there's no way you're going to say it's going to make things worse because there's going to be employment this is the level of how much the countries that are suffering think and I keep telling South Africans guys don't be misled by such talk by these intelligent noises Nigerians do it every day on TikTok everywhere on social media they're bringing you stats, they're bringing you records, they're bringing you arguments. But guys, why don't you go fix your country? Why don't you go have these arguments in your country? Why do you keep saying that somebody's country is going to get worse if they get rid of foreigners? How, wh how is it any of your business? Why don't you let them get worse on their own? And you know what's the funny thing? Foreigners like myself, who actually appreciate countries that have accepted us, that have actually taken their law, and respected the laws of those countries, done right by those countries, also want foreigners to leave. I, if Angolans were doing nonsense in this country, they must leave. Let's watch this. You said you're a Mexican-American. Yes. What do you think about Trump's border policy? I love it. I love it. I'm 100% for it. Do you know anybody that crossed the border without applying for green cards? Oh, yes. Unfortunately, I have met family members that yeah. did. Cousins, cousins, nephews, nieces. Because those people might be deported if Donald Trump wins. That's okay. That's okay. How long have they been here for? Years, like 20, some are 30 years. And so you think they, the members of your own family have been here for 30 years should be deported? Uh, yeah. Yes. I mean... They can be deported, but they can also apply to, be, to come back again to the United States, but do it the right way. How do you think they would feel about you saying that? Oh, they would be very angry. They are angry at me right now. They don't talk to me because I support Trump. You see, guys, even myself, I've lost a lot of friends because of this. And most people think I'm doing this for cloud, for money. Guys, no. How much money you think I'm making here? I'm going to post it. And I haven't even withdrawn any of the cents. And it's not about the money. It's about the truth. You see, this lady, clearly you can see, she understands that even if her own family members being illegal in America is affecting her because now when the Americans get angry, they don't care who's legal or illegal. When the South Africans get angry and upset, they don't care who's illegal, who's Nigerian or not. In the end of the, look at me, I look like a Nigerian. What do you think will happen when they start getting rid of Nigerians? Are they going to collect my black ass too? I'm going to be screaming there in Portuguese, this is hell, or any fish, nah. Ain't nobody going to listen to that shit. Ain't nobody gonna listen. Give countries owners the respect they deserve. Give them the respect they deserve. It's simple as that. You disrespect them, you mock their, 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 their ways, you destroy their nation, forgetting where you're coming from. How does that even make any sense? How does that even make any sense? I am having a hard time explaining this feeling, which is surprising, right? I'm a black woman in America. I'm Congolese and live in America. Of course, I am used to being overqualified and underlooked. Used to this feeling of constant disappointment. But this time, this time, this time felt different. Because if a woman like Vice President Kamala Harris, her opponent is a criminal, yet, yet America chooses him 
what message does that send to all the other men who are comfortable assaulting women? What message does... You see what she's doing? So, she's a Congolese living in the US. So she knows she's in trouble. She knows if they investigate her, they'll find either she acquired a permit wrong, something's up with her. That's why she's panicking. So what does she instead do? She tries to rally up other women. Because Donald Trump was accused of as a sexual assault and all these things. She's trying to show that Americans chose a criminal or somebody who was accused of abusing women to become their president. What she's lacking in knowledge is that America is so tired that they are going through so much that they would rather have a criminal lead them to do the right thing. We see that they would never think like that. They would never use that type of thinking process because it doesn't benefit them to think like that. People don't want to speak the way I speak. Foreigners don't want to speak the way I speak because it doesn't benefit us to speak like this, to make South Africans look good, to speak the truth that South Africans are not xenophobes. They are just trying to protect their country. They're just trying to do right by their children. They want the future of their children and grand-grandchildren to be protected. And they don't want their country to be infested by foreigners. So in the next 10, 20 years, you don't even know who's who anymore. So this lady now is using the fact that sexual assault or abuse is a big thing in society to try and really support and this is what Kamala also tried to do and it failed because people are tired you can't keep using nonsensical excuses to cover up nonsense simple as that that's sent to all the women who have been assaulted i just feel so defeated i feel so defeated i feel i don't even know how to explain this feeling it's too much because there's just ne there was never a part of me for a second who thought like there was even uh, i am so scared i think that's really the underlying feeling is i'm just scared why would you be scared if you're legal in the country and you did everything right why would you be scared in a country if you acquired their permit right go back home go back home simple as that you see, guys, this is what I'm talking about. These people will do anything but go home. Anything but go home. And then they will insult the country and everything else. You see, the issue is, guys, hospitals, public services are getting overcrowded because they are catering for people that they can't cater for. South Africa has this very same problem that I'm about to play on this video. And Americans are facing the same thing, Australians, the UK, everyone is facing this very same issue. Texas hospitals are now being legally required to ask patients whether they have legal status in the United States prior to helping them. I am not kidding. Why is he doing this other than blatant racism? Well, Abbott is claiming that he wants to calculate exactly how much money is going into these programs through federal assistance like CHIP and Medicaid, which is ironic considering you need legal status to be even eligible to apply. But don't freak out yet. This is not going to make it past even the most conservative current Supreme Court because it is so blatantly unconstitutional on its face. You see, they are saying it's unconstitutional. It's not going to get proved. You see, this is what I'm saying, guys. Foreigners, even in America, illegal, have more rights than Americans. And the same thing is happening here in South Africa. And that's why Donald Trump says, I don't care. I don't care. I will put my people first. And his people will defend him. Yes, there's a group of them that will be against him. But they will defend him. And this is how it has to be done. Because what people don't understand is people are using country systems to manipulate it. And then, like the Nigerians, they constantly say, then why doesn't South Africa punish the home affairs officials? Why doesn't South Africa do this? Why doesn't South Africa do that? But what if people are doing exactly what this guy is about to explain? Which they are doing here in South Africa. Is birth tourism legal? The answer is no. Coming to the United States on a tourist visa to give birth in the U.S. and thus make that baby a U.S. citizen is not a legal reason to enter the United States on a tourist visa. And if it's determined that your sole purpose on coming on a tourist visa is to give birth, then you'll be turned away at the airport. What is allowed is coming for medical. Simple. But the problem is when it happens in South Africa, people want to make a lot of noise. People are entering into South Africa, especially in Zimbabwe, illegally through the borders, giving birth here so their children can get an identity. Same thing that happened with Chidima. Same thing that happened with Chidima. Fraudulently acquired identity, child benefits from it. South Africa, the, the nation gets angry, they get crucified. Treatment. Maybe that's how this birth tourism industry gets around this whole tourist visa issue with giving birth. I don't know. 
So the bottom line, you can't use a tourist visa to enter the United States to give birth, but you can use a tourist visa to enter the United States for medical treatment related to a pregnancy, as long as the U.S. government is not paying for any of the medical treatment. But if it's determined that your only reason to come to the United States on a tourist visa was, was to give birth and not for medical treatment, then you're at risk of having your visa revoked. South Africa pays for all this medical treatment. Guys, imagine using a visitor's visa, you're coming to visit, and then next thing you busy utilizing the free services that the country uses for your own benefit. Worst of all, you even extend your stay. Your stay. The state is paying for it. The people are paying for it. The taxpayers are paying for you to get treatment that you never paid for it, that you don't deserve. Fine, we should be kind-hearted. We should be loving. We should be brothers and sisters. We should show each other compassion. But how am I supposed to show you compassion when I'm hungry myself and you are eating more than me? How am I supposed to show you compassion when you are benefiting more than me? You call me lazy for fighting for what is rightfully mine that you are benefiting from. Guys, if all this doesn't make sense to you, and if this is not enough to say that South Africans are not xenophobes, South Africans are doing what's right by their country because America is doing it and everybody else is doing it, then maybe you need to ask yourself this question. Why isn't your country doing all this? You need to ask yourself this question. Why are you not doing right by the country that is giving yourself a second chance. The fact that you don't question yourself and you do whatever you need to do in order to survive in other people's country, regardless of how bad it is by selling drugs, by kidnapping, by everything. And this excuse of, yes, but South Africans do it too. That is a stupid excuse. Or oh, every country has criminals. Yes, every country has criminals. But can the criminals not be foreigners? Can the criminals not be visitors? You are them visiting somebody's house and you're being disrespectful. I'm your boy Uncle P. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.